Hello, this is Professor Hill from the University of Toledo. This is f another Physics 2140 video lecture, Solving a Circuit. In this lecture, you already know about the junction rule and the loop rule. In this lecture, I want to discuss some strategies which might be involved in solving for the currents in a circuit. And the circuit I want to look at is one that we actually saw in the homework. Um, but it's kind of nice to play along. So. We start with a circuit with a series of batteries and resistors. As you can see, all the resistors are 2 ohms, all the batteries, the two batteries are 4 volts. And the question I want to know is I want to know what are all the currents in this circuit. More specifically, I'm, I'm asked to find, find the currents in the batteries. Okay, so I want to find the current there, and I want to find the current there. Now the first step we can do in solving a circuit is to look at what the question is asking. And the question says, I just want to know the current in the batteries, which means if I can find any place where I can replace resistors with their effective resistance and not affect the things I'm trying to solve for, then I should do that as a first step. For instance, I notice that right here, I've got two resistors which are in parallel, which are not directly involved. I don't, I'm not asked for the current through either one of these resistors. Okay, no. So that means I can replace these two resistors with their effective resistance. Okay, and they're in parallel, so that means their conductance is add. So two ohms is half of a mo. A two ohm resistor has a conductance of half a mo. Together, they have a conductance of one mo, which means that they have effective resistance of one ohm. So I can replace those two resistors with a resistor with the resistance of one ohm, as I've done right here. So that's the first step. The second step when solving a circuit is to identify all the different currents that are going on in the problem. These are our variables which we're going to be solving for. Okay, we've already identified two of them. We're told that we want to know the currents through the two batteries, I1 and I2. Okay. Now, it can be tricky to figure out exactly how many currents there are. If you just sort of start looking around, you may miss some. And so the, the thorough way of finding the, all of the currents in the circuit is to look at the junctions. For instance, right here, right there, right there, and right there. And at every junction, each of the wires that go into a junction have to have a different current label associated with them. Okay, So for instance, this junction right here, I see that there is current I1 coming out. Okay, But there are two other wires, and each of them must have their own label as well. So let's call this current I3, and let's call this current I4. Okay. And I've chosen directions. I know what the answers are going to be, but in practice, you can make the directions be whatever you want them to be. Now we look up at the next junction up here, okay, and we see that we've already got current I1 going in. We've got current I3 coming out, but then there's this current in the top of the triangle, okay, that needs its own label as well. So we'll call that I5. And that's an easy one to miss in this problem. If we look at the next junction, we see that the next junction has I5 coming in, I2 coming out, and then there's this third current that needs to be called I6. And finally, we get to the last junction. At this junction, we see we've got I2 coming in, I6 coming out, and then I4 coming out. So all three of those currents have different labels and we're fine there. So there are six different currents in this problem, six variables, six unknowns, okay? Which can be daunting if we had to solve this using six equations for six unknowns. So to simplify that process, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna look for simple loops. A simple loop is a loop in the circuit, like when we use the loop rule, which has a single resistor in it, only one resistor. 
Okay, and the reason is when we go through the loop rule, every time we go through a battery, we add V. Every time we go through uh, a resistor, we have to subtract IR, I1R, or something like that. And if we have multiple resistors and so forth, then we have multiple variables, which we have to deal with in that equation. But if we can find a path which only has a single resistor in it, Okay, then there's only going to be one variable, one current in that equation, which means I can immediately solve for that equation, uh, solve for that variable, and that will s reduce the number of unknowns that I have in my problem. And so that's a good thing. Okay, so we want to look for simple loops in this problem, and there are actually three of them. Here's one in yellow go up through the 4 volt battery, you go down through this resistor, that's one resistor, and back to our starting point. Okay, if we use the loop rule on that, that um, loop, we see we start here, we go up 4, we go down this resistor with the current, so we're going to subtract, so up 4, down 2I3, and we're back to our starting point. Okay, and so that must be equal to 0. We can immediately solve that to see that I3 is equal to 2 amps. Now, um, so we've already eliminated one unknown, solve for one unknown. Another simple loop is this one. We go up the battery, plus 4. We go down this resistor, minus 2 I6. And we're back to our starting point. So 4 minus 2 I6 is equal to 0. So we see also I6 must be equal to 2 amps. And the third simple loop in this problem is this triangle. We start, is the triangle. We start here. We go up the battery, plus 4. We go down this battery, plus 4. And we go across this resistor, which is going down that resistor. So that's minus 1I4. So plus 4, plus 4, minus 1I4 is equal to 0. That means 8 is equal to I4. Okay. So we've immediately solved for three of the six variables that we need. Okay. And here I filled in those three currents, the 2 amp, the 2 amp, and the 8 amp that we had solved for before. There we go, there we go, and there we go. The next step after finding simple loops is to apply some junction rules, okay? And sometimes that's all we need. For instance, and we don't even have to write out the equations. For instance, if I look at this junction right here, I see that I've got 8 amps coming in, I've got 2 amps coming in, so that means that the current out of this junction has to be equal to the current in. The current in is 10 amps. The current out must be 10 amps as well. We look at this junction. That means that the current through the, this battery is 10 amps. That's half the problem solved right there. If we look at this junction, we see that there's 10 amps coming in and 2 amps going out. Therefore, there must be... 8 amps, to, if there's 10 amps coming in, there has to be 10 amps going out. There's already 2 going this way, there must be 8 amps going that way. Okay, and finally, if we get to this junction here, we see we've got 8 amps coming in, 2 amps coming in, there must be 10 amps going out through the battery. Okay, and we've solved our problem. We want to know what the current through the two batteries are, it's 10 amps for both batteries. OK, to summarize what we did, um, when we're solving a circuit, so the tips. First of all, read the question uh, carefully and see what is asked for. Sometimes the problem does not, is not going to ask you for all of the currents. It's just going to ask for a current through one particular circuit element. And this may adjust our strategy. For instance, if we can find a simple loop involving that particular uh, 
circuit element. For instance, if I ask you what is if I asked you what was the current through this resistor right here, we could have used this simple loop right here to find that the current is 2 amps and we would have been done. We could have ignored all the rest of this. Okay? The second step um, is replace sorry, replace resistors with their effective resistance when possible. I can't seem to write on that spot right there. There we go. Um, particularly if I'm asked about the current in one part of the circuit, I can replace resistors in other parts of the circuits with their effective resistance and not affect the outcome. The third thing we want to do is look for simple loops, because that will allow us to eliminate some of the currents right away. The next step was to look at the junction rule. And we might not even have to write that those equations out. We might be able to uh, fill the currents in right on the board, and then uh, right on the diagram. And then the last step, if all else fails, if that doesn't give you your answer, then you have to break out the uh, normal loop rule, which may involve